Well, hey kids, my name is Miss Tony, and I have a Bible story for you today. And some of you know me, but some of you don't. But if you know me, you know how much I love being with you. And I like to start out and say, who knows what time it is? And then you say, let me hear you. It's Miss Tony's favorite time of the week. That's right. It's my favorite time of the week because I get to be with you. So I hope you enjoy this story today. So you listen carefully, okay? And maybe if you want to, if you have a brother or a sister or more than one, you can bring them along too and they can listen as well. They'll enjoy it as well. Now, you, you had a story already um, that talked about the creation, right? You had a story that was about Genesis Chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And, you know, I like to do things to help you remember Bible verses and hide them in your heart. And my favorite thing to do is to put a song to the verse. And that's exactly what I've done for Genesis 1-1. And we're going to sing that now because this Bible verse relates to our story today. Okay, if you know this song, sing along with me. In the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. When was that? In the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So you remember when you were learning about the creation story and how God created the heavens and the earth and he made plants and he made animals and then he made people and the earth was a beautiful home for people to live. And I want you to keep that in mind as we hear about today's story. You know, God created everything, and he is in control of everything, and he knows everything. So we had in our story, we had the world becoming evil. It says that everything people thought about was bad stuff. It says the world was full of violence. And there were people that didn't love God. And they didn't even think about God. They just thought about themselves. They didn't believe in God. All they thought about was bad stuff. And you know, that made God very sad. To see all this sin everywhere. The Bible says that man's heart was evil and God's heart was grieved. But then there's a beautiful verse in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 8, and I'm going to read it to you. It says, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Here's all these people thinking bad things, not caring about God, not caring about anybody that, but themselves. But then there's one man and his family that God had his grace on. This one man that was going to have faith in God and going to love God and worship him. And his name was Noah. Now, Noah had a wife and he had three sons. And their names were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. 
Now, do you know anybody named Shem or Ham or Japheth? I sure don't, but that's okay. Those names were good for back then. And Shem, Ham, and Japheth, all each, each of them have had wives as well. And the Bible says that Noah was righteous and that he walked with God. So God had a plan. Like I said at the beginning, he's, he's in charge. He's in control. He saw all this evil and he had a plan. And he reveals his plan to Noah. He comes to talk to Noah and he says, Noah, I am going to destroy the world with a flood. Hmm. A flood? What in the world is a flood? Noah had never seen a flood because there had never been a flood. Well, God goes on. He says, I'm going to have a flood, but I want you to make something called an ark. An ark? What is that? It's a big boat, Noah. It's a really big boat. And I'm going to tell you exactly how to make it. And I'm going to tell you the size and the shape and what to put in it, okay? So, Noah is getting ready here. He's got his tape measure because God is going to tell him how long it's going to be and how wide it's going to be and how deep it's going to be. He's got very specific instructions. He tells him, I want you to make it out of a certain kind of wood called gopher wood. And I want you to put something called pitch that's going to cover it real good and seal it up real good. I want you to make three decks, uh, an upper deck, a middle deck, and a lower deck. I want you to put a window and a door. And God is very specific about what he need, needed to do. And then Noah says, I will establish my covenant with you. Now a covenant, I like to say, is a special promise that brings people together. And God is going to make this covenant with Noah to bring him together with God's people for all eternity because he's going to show that sin must be punished, but he has provided salvation, a way to be saved. So here we had Noah, and he heard these instructions, and he started building. Now, can you imagine, can you imagine the people looking at Noah? Huh, what is that thing you're making, Noah? What, is, what do you need all that wood for? What's that other stuff you're putting on there? Why are you, what is a boat? What, what's an ark? What, what are you doing? But Noah kept building, right? Because that's what God told him to do. I'm sure Noah told them about God as well. But it says everyone was evil. No one believed in God. So God also told Noah what to put in the ark. He said, I want you and your family to go in, your sons, what were the names? Shem, Ham, and Japheth, right? And their, their wives. And then I want you to put two of every kind of animal, male and a female. And then bring some food. <laughs> oh, that's a good thing. Because they needed to eat while they were in there. They were going to be in there a long time, by the way. And then he asked them, asked Noah to put in seven pairs of clean animals. And these were going to be for worship so he could make sacrifices. God had a reason for everything he told him to, to do. So then the scripture says that God told Noah, he said, Now, when you go in the ark, in seven days, I'm going to bring rain. And it's going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, I am glad that God told him that it was going to be seven days. Because if I was in that ark, and I'm all sealed in, and I'm ready for this flood to come, and nothing is happening, I'd, I'd get a little concerned. 
But God told them it was going to be seven days, so they knew what to expect. But can you imagine what the people on the outside were doing? Ha! Look at those people there in the ark, and there's supposed to be a flood. Where's the flood? It's sunshine. It's a great day. Ha! Yeah, just wait. Seven days passed. And guess what happened? The rain came. Now, Noah had done everything that God had commanded him to do. He built the ark exactly the way God told him. He put the animals in exactly. He put his family in, and they waited. And it says in uh, Genesis chapter 7, verse 16, the Lord shut him in. The Lord was going to protect him and his family and the animals from everything that was going on outside. That ark was going to be a safe place for them. So then the rain came, and the floods came, and it rained, and it rained, and it rained, and then it rained some more, and some more, and some more. So much rain, more rain than you and I have ever seen, I'm sure. And then the water got so high that it covered the mountains. And every living thing died, just as God had said. It says in chapter 7, verse 23, that only Noah was left and those who were with him in the ark. You see, the ark was the only means of salvation. That's what God had provided, and that was the only means of salvation. Noah's family was saved. So then after the 40 days, when it stopped raining, it says the waters prevailed for 150 days. Now, how long is 150 days? It's hard to describe to you because, uh, but it, let's just say it's a long, long time, okay? Several months went by. They're still in the ark. There's water outside. It's still not safe to come outside because the water is, you know, the earth is filled with water. And I love this verse in Genesis chapter 8, verse 1. It says, but God remembered Noah and all the beasts and all the livestock that were with him in the ark. God remembered Noah. He remembered his promise. And There is life inside the ark, but outside the ark, it was taking a long time for the water to go down. So months passed and Noah sends a raven out the window and the raven came back, back and forth, back and forth. Then he sends a dove, but the dove came back because she didn't have anywhere to land. Then Noah waited seven days and sent the dove again. This time the dove had in its mouth a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had gone down. There was a sign of life in that little olive leaf. Well, a whole year after they had entered the ark, God spoke to Noah. He said, bring your family and the living things out of the ark. And then he said this in Genesis 8, 17, be fruitful and multiply on the earth. God is giving instructions to Noah's family. They had been saved, and now they need to be fruitful and multiply. They need to grow their family. They need to continue and build a home and enjoy the beautiful earth that God created again. And they were going to Tell people about God and his wonderful covenant, his wonderful promise that brings people together. And so the first thing Noah did was build an altar. I tell you, if I had been inside of a big boat for a whole year with all those animals on it, and I came out alive and beginning a new life, I think the first thing I would do is to want to pray to God and worship God. So he built an altar, 
And he took those, some of those clean animals that God had told him to bring to the ark and he sacrificed those animals to worship God. And God smelled, it says, a, a pleasing aroma. It was a beautiful smell that came through. And God established his covenant with Noah and he said, never again will a flood destroy the earth. That's my promise to you. And to help you remember this promise, I'm going to make a rainbow in the sky. And when you see a rainbow in the sky after it rains, you will know that I am going to keep my promises. So the lessons we learn today is that God is the creator. He made everything beautiful and he is in control. He is also holy and he doesn't like sin. But he is merciful if we will trust in his salvation that he provided through Jesus. Then we can be saved. God has given us his word so that we know what he says. We know what he wants. We know how to get to know him better. These stories help us to see about God's promises. Let's have a prayer together. Dear God, thank you for the promises that you made to Noah and to his family. Thank you for the promises that you make to us in your word, that you provide salvation, and that all we need to do is to trust in you and to trust in Jesus' provision for our sins. I ask your blessing on the children this week and help them to think about this story. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.